This study, this study is on the impact of the San Francisco proposed uh, minimum wage law, Proposition J, is the latest in a series of research reports on minimum wage carried out by the Institute for Research on Labor and Employment at UC Berkeley. And San Francisco was the first city in the country to a comprehensive minimum wage law in two passed uh, by the, the voters in 2003, and the San Francisco minimum wage is now 1074 an hour. Under the proposed ordinance, it would increase to $15 an hour by 2018, phased in over four steps. So in this study, we estimate how the proposed law would affect both workers and firms. And I'm going to talk about how it will affect workers. And then uh, Dr. Reich will talk about how it affects uh, firms and employment in San Francisco. But first, just uh, following up on some of the things that Shasan mentioned, looking at what's going on overall in the San Francisco economy. And, and as we know, the economy is really booming. Um, employment growth during the recovery has outpaced California, as well outpaced California as a whole. And the city's unemployment rate is now 4.5%, which is well below the state average of 7.4%. But that growth, uh, the city's robust growth, has not resulted in shared prosperity. Uh, the good news is because of San Francisco's existing minimum wage law, wages for workers at the very bottom have kept uh, pace with inflation, but it hasn't kept, unlike the surrounding areas, but it hasn't kept pace with the increase in, in rental costs. Um, when we go up a little in, the, in, in earnings, between 2007 and 2012, needy, median annual earnings uh, adjusted for inflation actually fell by nearly 5% uh, in San Francisco during this time. So more and more people are falling behind, especially when you factor in the increase in, in rental costs. Income inequality has been rising in, is rising in San Francisco. And in fact, San Francisco is now uh, ranked second among US cities in income inequality above cities like New York. Uh, which, you know, we think to build de Blasio in the tale of two cities, uh, San Francisco, in terms of income inequality, is even worse. So, what's being proposed? The proposal, as mentioned, would raise the minimum wage in San Francisco to $15 by 2018. If we look at that in real terms, that is inflation adjusted terms of expected inflation, that's about 13.73 in today's dollars, which is about a 28% increase in the minimum wage overall in real dollars. And to put that in context, San Francisco's original minimum wage law that went into effect in uh, 2004 increased the minimum wage by the same amount of 28%. Uh, so this is roughly equivalent in terms of uh, growth in the minimum wage. So what will happen as a result? We estimate that nearly a quarter of San Francisco's workforce 142,000 workers would receive pay increases by the time the law is uh, fully phased in in 2018. Of that, that we estimate about 26% of female workers would receive pay increases, and about 21% of male workers would receive pay increases. The overall, by the, when it's phased in 2018, that'd be an additional $400 million a year that would go into the pockets of lower wage workers in San Francisco. The average hourly wage increase, $1.69 an hour, but the average annual earnings increase is $2,800 uh, per worker. That's a significant uh, increase. And again, the average percent annual increase in earnings per worker is about 16%. So these are real, this is a meaningful uh, <coughs> raise for workers at the bottom in San Francisco. So who, would, who are the workers who would get those increases? In, in contrast to some of the common perceptions about low-wage workers, 97% are in their 20s or older, and 63% are in their 30s or older. In fact, the median age is about 35. So these are working age adults. More than a third are married, and close to a third have children. And the average worker who would benefit from the law contributes nearly 60% of their family's income. So low-wage workers in San Francisco are not people earning extra income for their families. This is really the core of what people are using to survive on. The other thing that was interesting in terms of these findings is looking at the educational backgrounds, I think the more surprising findings, is that affected workers uh, have a wide range of educational backgrounds, but 59% have at least some college, and uh, a quarter have a bachelor's degree or higher. So this is not just people who are high school education or below high school education. This really does go across 
the education spectrum. The greatest benefit would be to uh, workers of color. 15% of white workers would receive pay increases, a quarter of black and Asian workers, and more than a third of, of Latino workers uh, would receive increases. And more than three quarters of working poor families would see their pay grow up, uh, go up. So the, the largest effect, of course, is on lower wage uh, fam families, lower income families, as we'd expect. Uh, but it's not limited to low income families. And I think it's an important part of understanding what's going on here. If we, if we look, we see that at the median income of San Francisco, San Francisco workers actually fell by nearly 5% over this recent period. You do have workers in families across a broader range of the income spectrum. And it's important that, it, that families, not just the poorest families, but families and low and middle income fam uh, uh, earners would also receive pay increases as a result of the law. So about two-thirds of the workers who receive pay increases are full-time workers, about one-third are part-time workers, but a much higher share, almost half of part-time workers, would receive pay increases. And we know this is another issue San Francisco's really been looking at is what's going on with part-time workers and the problems of, of, of having predictable schedules and the hours of work, and that's the other thing that affects overall income. So this sort of fits together with that package in terms of also raising up the hourly amount that part-time workers uh, would receive. So at this point, I'm going to uh, turn it over to uh, Michael Wright to discuss the impact on San Francisco businesses. But just to say overall, what we can see from this is that the, the minimum wage increase would really bring very real benefits to a large number of workers in San Francisco.